Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalie Bauck. I'm uh, Head of Projects and Partnerships for Solitech Electronics Kenya, I'm based out of um, uh, Mombasa, Kenya, and Nairobi. Um, go ahead, Rachel. Next slide. So first, I'll talk you through a bit of an overview of the company, uh, background on our, our market landscape, and then we go into sort of our business operations and the projects and how so Linda Hand and, and Energize Africa platform has really expanded our impact in the renewable sector in East Africa. Next slide. Yeah. So um, Solitech is um, not only a, a solar energy company, but we have quite a span. So we deal with all the problems, whether they're on-grid and off-grid. So we do power control, which addresses your on-grid problems and your weak grid problems with power outages, voltage fluctuations, all of that that you get from um, a lot of the grids in developing countries that don't have the budget for maintenance or they don't have the right capacity and supply and reach that a lot of developing countries have. Um, and then we also do work with renewable energies, specifically solar energy. Um, we uh, started our operations in 1985, so we are a 33-year-old company. Um, we initially owned the franchise for Solitech UK, which is a UK company that really specializes in power control devices. Um, our head office is in Mombasa, which is actually on the coast of Kenya, and our second office is in Nairobi. And we have a distribution network all across Kenya and in through the region. So we also work with a sister company in Tanzania. Uh, we work with distributors in Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. Um, and we're starting up a partnership in South Sudan at the moment. Um, most of what we do is we sell innovative products through this network, um, and we work with a lot of distributors from supermarkets um, to your hardware shops, your general stores, your small kiosks, um, and then also with uh, finance partners like uh, microfinance banks, uh, lending circles or organiza organizations like SACOs, which are lending groups um, in and around Kenya and throughout East Africa. Um, our two divisions are, like I was talking about earlier, power control, which is your voltage regulation systems, energy management systems, um, and power backups to allow you to actually have energy where the grid is absent, and the solar energy, uh, lanterns, so the home systems, uh, PV systems, and all your sort of appliances that it run off of solar energy. Uh, all right, next slide. So this just goes into actually our overview of all of our, our ranges from the domestic power control to your solar side. So really I'm gonna focus on the second half of our products, our portable solar lantern, solar home systems, our PV systems, which also run all of your um, uh, solar appliances, refrigerators, solar water pumps, um, other equipment, solar water heaters, and then uh, actually installing uh, larger solar um, solar installations. Go ahead, next slide. Um, so, so what Solar Tech Kenya is known for? Um, we have obviously been around for a very long time, so we're a mature market. We have a mature, mature company. We have um, a very strong distribution network with uh, organizations and, and distributors that have been with us for 30 years or more. Um, and we've been steadily growing. Um, we've been awarded a couple of um, uh, awards. Um, there's one that's called the Top 100 Mid-Sized Companies. We've gotten that several, time, several years uh, in a row. Uh, that just reviews the companies in Kenya and their overall work growth and their overall strength. Um, like I said before, we do a lot with um, offering uh, quality products, but also after-sales care, which is incredibly important in Kenya and with the renewable energy sector. Um, all, all of our uh, solar products come with, at minimum, a two-year warranty up to 20 to 25-year warranty on our panels. Um, and the idea behind this is that a lot of people spend a large chunk of their money on renewable energy products, and if you're not able to offer them that warranty and support, um, that investment is much harder for them to make. And so we really uh, 
really put a lot of emphasis and put a lot of resources in ensuring that they have um, access to our service centers, which are across Kenya and the region, and making sure that process is easier to allow people to make that step or that leap into solar renewables, uh, solar energy and renewable products, and feel confident that they have the backup in and around Kenya to have that product work. Uh, we have a large distribution network, which is where we are reaching into. Um, and we are now working a lot on a sustainable business model. Um, this is offering the solar lanterns, um, training, we call them uh, demand creators and uh, solar entrepreneurs that are entering different villages to actually introduce the concept of solar energy in a lot of places and also explaining the products, how they work, what you can use solar on, um, and getting the feedback back to us as well as what is the need in, in different village levels in different areas, whether it's uh, you know, an affordable solar water pump for irrigating a small plot of land, or whether it's a home system, or whether it's a system that's running a uh, refrigeration or cold storage. Um, so. Uh, We've also worked with lots of different um, partners to have this happen. So we realized that one of the greatest barriers for accessing um, renewable energies in and around East Africa is finance. Um, so one of the things we do is we work with finance partners to ensure that we can offer financial plans, whether it be six months, 12 months, 24 months of, of a payment plan so that upfront cost um, it's spread out over time and it becomes manageable. Um, a lot of times this is one of the biggest selling points because uh, you're competing with kerosene for low renewable energies, which is a small amount daily. And this is uh, how this structure got set up. So now with a payment plan over the same amount of time, it becomes affordable, affordable to a larger group of people. So these are the things that we are developing and have been developing over the last about 10 years working in the renewable sector in East Africa. All right, keep going. And we'll look at the market landscape now. Um, so like I said, we've got the two, two different uh, uh, departments in solar tech, power control and solar. Um, there's a huge problem with weak grid in and out of East Africa and most developing countries uh, that leaves a, a, a challenge for people to do business even if they're hooked up to the grid. But we'll focus on the solar side, which is um, more than 50% in East Africa are living off the grid right now, which means they not even have the um, ability to uh, choose to be on the grid. A lot of times they live what we call under the grid, which is very close to the grid, and it will reach above them, but they will not have the finances um, to actually sign up for uh, the grid or pay the connection fees. And um, so... Uh, a lot of most people rely then on alternate sources of power, kerosene candles, um, that type of thing, which can cause health and environmental issues. Um, and this is you, you've seen this throughout. It's, uh, if you have only a small amount of money, you will use what source you can. So whether it's kerosene or whether it's candles, it's what's available. And what we're trying to do is make solar energy another option, make it available. Um, as prolific as, as the kerosene and candles, so they can start to replace them and people will be able to save money. Um, the demand for it is now growing, because after 10 years of being in this market, people are under, starting to understand what solar energy is, how it will benefit them, um, and what they can do with it. Um, so you see that there are a lot, that are people, lot, lots of people are moving to using mobile phones, or they want to access internet, so they were using computers. Um, and this demand is, is driving people to need energy access as well. Um, and, and that's also pushing governments, which is quite good, to increase uh, customer awareness, increase access, lift regulations, and try and lift the barriers of importation or customs into the country. And so it's, it's both those things are working to, to grow a demand for clean energy, not based, just based on uh, the environmental and health positives, but also this uh, 
larger understanding that most people are growing to have a larger energy need as they move through their daily lives and as they lift themselves out of poverty. All right, next slide. So this is a very interesting map so that you can just see um, throughout East Africa, the dark blue lines are your high voltage transmission lines and the light blue are your low voltage. And you'll see a lot of Kenya and a lot of Tanzania, there is no access. Um, and on the other, the other portions, you'll see the different countries and the proportions of urban that live off grid and rural that live off grid. Um, there is a huge difference between the amount of people that are living in rural areas and urban areas and whether they have access to energy, um, which means that people living in rural areas will be at a disadvantage in a lot of regards, access to health, access to education, access to uh, jobs and economy and money because of their lack of access to uh, energy. Um, so this is, we're really looking at this off-grid population to tackle it to see if we can um, jump in there with renewable energies and become a substitute or become the main energy provider where the grid is lacking. All right, next slide. Uh, so we approximately so uh, this is from the um, World Bank is basically measuring about 133 million people in East Africa living off of uh, off grid, uh, and that is who we're really aiming at. Uh, you've got massive effects of firewood, charcoal, and kerosene that can have health problems, um, eyes, lungs, that sort of thing with the with inhaling smoke or rubbing the eyes, and you've got a large population, a lot, lot, large population throughout East Africa um, that don't have an alternative yet. Um, but this is where we're looking at changing. Um, so their energy can step in and reduce the cost that they're spending on the consumables, by ker um, kerosene and charcoal, with a uh, constant renewable source of energy for them, whether it's for phone charging, whether it's for lighting, whether it's for uh, productive use, that type of thing. And we're seeing that there is a higher and higher demand, not just for your basics, such as the lighting and the phone charging, but also renewable uh, energy for your appliances. Um, so charging, um, so running refrigeration, like Rachel pointed out with um, their case example, or running solar water pumping, that type of thing. All right, keep going. Yeah, so, so basically this is to wrap it up that there is a growing market um, demand for PVs for both the small solar home systems up to larger ones that can run uh, mini grids that run villages or that can run community centers, clinics, that type of thing. Um, and you see this on the government level as well as the population level where the demands are creating. Um, schools and hospitals are looking into this, uh, buildings, institutions are looking into it. Um, there is um, an increase in the demand, the, the, the power demand on solar annually, and it's growing at a 15% rate every year within Kenya. Uh, and you see this, and you see um, that this is really where East Africa is going, and I think that they're going to become a leader in um, understanding, managing, using, and consuming renewable energy products. Um, we also have, are, are getting some support from the government in terms of uh, VAT exemptions, which helps a lot in importing products, um, and also then selling it on to the public, um, as well as uh, regulations for increasing uses of solar energy, like uh, requiring solar hot water heating for um, uh, any sort of, any institution that has 100 liters or more daily of their water intake, that type of thing. So it's the Kenyan government is starting to understand and wake up that they need to also be on board with moving over to renewables. Uh, and that's very good for companies like us um, and other companies on the Lend a Hand platform even throughout East Africa, um, because it means that we can start accessing these markets that are, that are more distant and uh, more difficult with the support of uh, government agencies, as well as international support. All right, next slide. 
All right, so this goes into uh, so the tech business. So we uh, have three different ways of reaching our clients. We use direct sales that are through our offices, website, and field sales teams that are spread out across Kenya. Um, then we work through a distribution network of hardware, electrical shops, supermarkets, and partners like MFIs or SACOs um, to get to uh, spread out across and get into the Zizban villages. And then we work through agent networks. And these agent networks really work with our small portable solar lanterns and solar home systems. We're their last mile distributors or last mile entrepreneurs um, and demand creators that work uh, in different villages, in different areas. Uh, we work into the uh, refugee camps in the Dab and Kakuma in Kenya as well. Uh, and we work into very remote and underserved counties. Um, throughout Kenya, especially north and northeastern. Next slide. Um, so, solar tech entrepreneurs and sales teams sold over 800,000 lanterns and solar home systems. This is over about the last 10 years, um, and from the last ooh, about six, eight months, this has really been supported by the Lend a Hand platform as well. Um, and it's gone to uh, increase our numbers and increase the availability of the product to offer it at, uh, to offer them on a uh, payment scheme and a payment platform, which is what Linda Hand uh, Energize Africa is doing, is helping us with. Now, all these solar lanterns we talk about have, or solar products have a massive benefit um, in terms of providing better light, opening hours longer, increasing health because you're reducing risk of, uh, of, of eye irritation and lung irritation from kerosene. Um, and it's re we're really seeing savings in a lot of these areas, uh, particularly the small businesses that switch to solar or bring on solar. Um, they really start to save money because their operations um, last longer, uh, and they also are not spending capital anymore on energy sources. Uh, we've also seen increase in child study time. Um, this has been documented several times with our own uh, experiences and in other places. That children are able to study into the night because in, in East Africa, we do not have um, as much change in, in the daylight hours as you do in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. So the sun rises at 6.30 in the morning, the sun sets at 6.30 in the evening, and it changes only about 30 minutes a day. So after 7 o'clock at night, it, it becomes very dark. And this is where renewable energies um, can really make a difference. Right, next slide. Um, and what, I, uh, what we really like and appreciate about the Energize Africa uh, Linda Hand platform is that it doesn't just restrict us to solar lanterns and solar home systems. They're looking at renewals, renewable energy across the board. Um, and so we have actually uh, worked with different fishing units, uh, fishing co-ops to put in solar run freezers and refrigeration systems. Um, this is something that we will be doing on the Lend Hand platform as well because they um, are very happy to support that. Um, we've also done a lot with solar water pumping this year. Uh, working with uh, farmers who want to be able to save the energy that they spend on generators to irrigate their fields or to even get the water um, into, the, into the different areas that they need from either river, rivers or from wells, boreholes, that type of thing. Um, so, and this, so this is all falls under productive use and we've really been uh, getting involved in these areas with cold storage and with renew with solar water pumping. Um, we've also uh, worked with an uh, organization called EEP, and this um, is where we trained about six, 60 youth and women uh, to become our last mile entrepreneurs and to take the message of solar energy into all of the underserved counties within Kenya, um, which is what uh, uh, the left-hand side of this the slide is saying, um, and through that program we sold 100,000, and that really is where we leaped up in our sales, and it's where we, uh, after that is where we, we went on to use the Lend a Hand platform 
to help us get the financing to continue this trend. All right, next slide. So this is our management team. So we have uh, um, our manager director is Salim, our commercial manager is Shamina, our head of the sales is Sam, and I'm uh, head of projects and partnerships. Uh, so this is the group you're working with. Go ahead, next slide. So just wanted to say thank you all very much for listening. Um, we have had great experience with um, Energy for Energize Africa and Linda Hand, and they've really assisted us in doing all these different projects that we've done, uh, which from uh, solar water, uh, solar water pumping to cold storage to solar lanterns um, and to installations.